Hello everyone, and this week we're going to be talking about SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Before we get into SLAM, we're going to talk about what's the difference between localization and mapping. If you remember from week three, we used particle filters to do localization. And what that relied on was the fact that we had a known map of the world. So we essentially knew where our fiducial markers or Ruko markers were around in the world. And then we could start a robot in some location, and then based on the markers, that our robot was able to see at any given specific point, we could figure out where our robot was in the 2D world. Now we can drive it around and we continue to figure out where it was based on what we knew. But in the case of mapping, what you typically have is you have some robot and then you have the trajectory. So we with pretty good certainty know where this robot drove on our map. We know where this robot drove in the world. So that we can construct some grid that will represent our map. And then based on this, and based on when we saw the different markers, we could say something like, oh, well, here I saw a marker that I thought was here. And then when I was here, I saw one that I thought was here. When I was here, I could see something that was over here and so on and so forth. And what you could do is reconstruct where all of our fiducial markers are. So this is the canonical idea of mapping. And this essentially relies on the fact that we have a known pose. So we know where our robot was throughout the entire world. It drove around, we knew where it was, and based on that we can reconstruct a map using our sensor measurements. And then the uncertainty comes in through the noise on those measurements with respect to the positions of the fiducial markers, rather than on the noise of the robot pose itself. In the case of localization, it was on the robot pose itself. This is really great and all, but it relies on the fact for localization I have to have a map, and for mapping I have to have localization. Well, a lot of times in the real world, we have neither. So how can we solve this problem at the same time? Because it sounds like it's chicken and the egg kind of problem. And that's the idea of SLAM. So what we're going to be doing in SLAM is we're going to be using our map to figure out our position and our position to figure out our map. There's different ways to do SLAM, but we're mostly going to be focusing on SLAM where we have distinct landmarks to keep track of. So landmark SLAM essentially starts like this. We have a robot and we have some position with a little bit of starting uncertainty. We don't know exactly where we start, but we have some idea. And then, like we've talked about before, we can do some movement. So this is our x0. We then move to a new position, x1. And since we've moved, our uncertainty has increased. Now I'm going to stop drawing the uncertainty bounds, because you can just imagine them there. We generally know how they move throughout the world. So then, let's say at this x1 position, I see some landmark off in the distance, l1. So I know that this landmark is essentially there. So I have some detection that connects the two like this. So then I keep driving. Now I get some x2. And at x2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see the same landmark again. But now, since I have both position and measurement noise, it'll end up in a slightly different location. And what I've done here essentially begins to represent the uncertainty about this landmark. So it will have like some mean and then some variance that corresponds to the landmark. But since I've seen the same landmark twice, I can have some sort of constraint. So the thing you can think of is that x1 and x2 are related because they see the same landmark. Since I see the same landmark, I can constrain these two poses. So then we can continue this on and on. We can drive to some x3 and then drive to some x4, and let's say from those positions we also see another landmark. So we have some L2, and at first we see L2 is there, then we see some L2 from X3, which is there, and then we see some L2 from X4, which is here. So, again, I can begin to represent some uncertainty about that landmark. And this is the idea of landmark slam. You drive around, you have some representation of how you move probabilistically through the world. You also have some representation of how accurate your sensors are when detecting landmarks. And then we can constrain all these positions together. And what we end up with is a decent map and decent localization. And you can do this and you can keep driving for an infinite amount of time and collect a large number of landmarks. And the more landmarks you have, the harder it is to compute what those updates should be, but the more accurate your map will be. Because the more constraints you have, potentially the better solution you will have. So there's a couple of issues with landmarks. So can we detect the same landmark again? So let's say we're back in our problem up here. And from x1, I can see L1. And from x2, I can see L1. But let's say that I was actually at x2, 
and I couldn't recognize the fact that it was the same L1, it was just some other landmark. Now essentially what I have is I have nothing. I have no constraint that constrains x1 and x2, they are no longer related, and I can't use that information to further constrain my pose. So you can also have issues with detecting the same landmark from different views. So let's say, back to our problem here, I drove around and eventually I reached a point here, some xn, and at xn I can also see l1. But, let's say I'm looking at some sign where I can only recognize the front. If I see the back, I don't know what I'm looking at, I can't constrain this, and then I can't provide a constraint between x1 and xn. The final problem is detecting the same landmark after not seeing it for a while. And this depends a lot on what your domain is, where you're trying to perform SLAM. You could think of it as the idea of, oh, can I recognize the same hallway 10 minutes later, which should be a pretty easy problem, or you can take it more to the extreme and be, can I recognize the same landscape? This is a very hard problem with a lot of research around it because we want SLAM solutions that are able to continuously run forever and update their position accordingly. There's this phenomenon in SLAM called loop closure. And I'm gonna demonstrate that with a diagram. So represent the green path as the true path the robot took. This would be our ground truth localization. And then I'm gonna draw what you would tend to see using a lot of the sensors we have, like on your robot, this is the measured path. This is what our odometry will tell us. So we'll start here at some position and we'll see some landmark one, and this is our X zero. So then what I can do is I can start off driving my, my robot, and then I end up at some position here, and then I end up at some position here, I end up here, then I end up here, and those would be my four corners. So if I was doing localization and I didn't have these landmarks, this is essentially the best I could do. I would have this slow drift that would pick up over time. So then from this final position, I then again see my landmark L1. So now that I've seen L1, I can do the thing called loop closure and essentially say that these two positions are related and I can provide some constraint between them such that I can correct all of the map back here and get back out the ground truth path. But this relies on the fact that I can one, detect a landmark, two, recognize that it's the same landmark, and three, provide some representation of how those two positions are related, even if they're not exactly the same position. So let's look at an example of what that would look like. So this is a graphic from a paper. And what they do here is the same thing I just showed you. They start off in some hallway and they detect this sign here, and then they're gonna drive. And as they drive, their odometry is going to increase in uncertainty. And as so you can see that their ellipses get larger, they get more uncertain about their position, and the thing begins to slowly drift. But once we get to this position, what you can see is I see the same board again. I see it from a slightly different angle and a slightly different position, but the feature detector is able to recognize the fact that this is the same feature. I can apply a constraint between these two poses, and once I apply that constraint, I can correct all of my old poses so that I get out a very good map. And this is the idea of loop closure. So there are a couple of sections that we can separate the slam problem in. I've kind of alluded to it, uh, but here they are specifically. There's feature extraction and tracking, so this is what people will typically call the front end of their SLAM problem. And then there's how do we take those features and combine them into pose updates and updates for the landmarks. And this is kind of referred to as the back end of a SLAM problem. So there are lots of different front ends, and we're going to cover a couple of them, and there are a lot of different back ends. So there are filter-based back ends, which we'll talk more about next week when we talk about the common filter. There's global optimization techniques that rely on ideas similar to what you use in your particle filter. And we have machine learning techniques that are evolving currently in the literature. So to start off, one of the most common ones we use is this thing called iterative closest point, and that uses a bar. Let's say we have some target map here, and what this represents is essentially what our previous map was from the SLAM problem. Because remember that we're constructing our map as we drive, so we never have the ground truth map, we just have some estimate of the map. So this is our previous map, and then we get some sensor measurement after some time. We drove our robot, and now what we want to do is try to align our robot to this map. And you can do this, as you can see here at the bottom, and based on this, we can apply some constraint on our position. So we essentially assume that our map is pretty accurate and we figure out what the difference in the state should be of our robot so that these things would align. Now there's always gonna be a little bit of noise that you're gonna to have to account for. So a next common front end is using camera-based features. So as you can see here in an image, we've done is represent a bunch of corners, because these are typically the things that you can see from multiple angles. 
These are using things called SIFT or FAST features or ORB features. And these stand for different types of features that can be extracted from images. And I encourage you to Google search on this if you want more information. So now that we've talked about a couple front ends, we can talk about a back end. So this is the filter-based computation, an extended common filter-based SLAM algorithm. And essentially what it's doing is it's driving the robot around. We have some uncertainty about our robot. We have a ground truth position and we have an estimated position of our robot. And based on that, they're slowly decreasing their uncertainty about given landmarks in the world. And this is the landmark that it's currently tracking. As you can see here, the ellipse represents the uncertainty with respect to our sensor model. So if we're doing some range-based sensor, there's usually more error head-on than there is laterally. So that makes sense why the ellipse has this kind of shape. EKF algorithms are really common in literature, but since they're filter-based, they're not trying to represent the true uncertainty of the entire history of the poses. We don't have some graph that goes back all the way to where we initially started. We only have essentially a look at what's our current level of uncertainty about these landmarks, as well as the positions, and correcting for things that change over time is very hard within this model. So a model that avoids that problem is this thing called graph-based SLAM represents the entire history of positions and sensor readings. So these teal dots represent positions, and as we drive the robot around, we get all these detections to different landmarks, and it represents those in a graph-like structure here, where we have these dots represent constraints. So I have some prior on our first pose since it's connected to no other variables. Then I have variables that represent my landmarks and my positions. And as you move along, we essentially create this graph structure that connects all these together with different constraints. So if I see landmark one from x0, x1, and x2, I get this thing and I can represent what the uncertainty about that landmark is through the graph. And these dots here represent our motion model. So graph-based algorithms are really nice, but they can potentially be difficult to solve in real time. Fortunately, there are a lot of techniques to get around that that incrementally solve these trees and or only solve a local area of them. So in summary, the idea of SLAM is generating a map while localizing. It is a chicken and the egg problem. You are trying to solve both at the same time when both problems rely on each other. So essentially, you're looking at an incremental algorithm where you solve for a position, then for a map, then for a position, then for a map, back and forth, and you slowly refine your estimate over time. And it can be split into two major parts. First, how we extract and track our features for landmark-based SLAM, and then also how can we use those features to constrain our odometry or our poses together to calculate a better estimate of our position or map. In the next videos, we'll talk about different representations of maps.